The Nigerian Bar Association Section on Public Interest and Development Law wants the federal government to ensure drastic and well thought out economic packages to be put in place to cushion the harsh effects of this removal of fuel subsidy. The chairman of the section, Mandi Obani, made the call at a briefing in Lagos. He says while effort had been made by government to birth palliatives aimed at elevating the harshness of the sudden removal, he believes this measure should have preceded the announcement. People are finding it difficult to go to work now because of the high cost of uh, transportation. Now, we don't have efficient railway system in the country, which would have been an alternative. Uh, we depend so much on, on, on cars and, 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 and buses in going to work. Now, what do we do to alleviate the high cost of uh, transportation is to ensure mass importation of buses, which the government can now either give to people you know, who are in, a, in, a, in a other you know, societies, give them those buses to manage, but then the, the fare should be reduced considerably. Or the government manages it in such a manner that like Lagos State uh, BRT, we find out that a lot of people even now do not use their vehicle you know, going to work. They use BRT. Now, if you reduce the cost of transportation, that is one aspect of you know, cushioning the effect. But I tell you this, there is no country that is not subsidized. That is, even in America, they subsidize certain aspects of their national life. And so there are areas where the government can also subsidize, you know, some level of things that will really, really affect the generality of the country citizens in terms of welfare. Speaking ahead of its annual conference, Obani says the event will adequately interrogate issues bordering on the judiciary's intervention in the electoral process. Now we are in the third leg of looking at this particular electoral process. We, we, we advise that the judiciary must be bold enough to apply the law. Wherever somebody is aggrieved and has gone to court to challenge the outcome, saying there has been no compliance with either the Constitution or the Electoral Act or the guideline or the regulation that set up the electoral process, the court must be very bold enough. But in doing this, we also advise that the court should be mindful of the fact that they should not substitute the majority vote with minority. Because at any time the court does that, the court is now substituting the majority vote with that of a minority. So it is the majority that decides who becomes their ruler, either governor or president at the polling unit. So whenever the court sits in order now to decide the outcome, they must be very careful that the majority vote is never substituted because whatever they decide there remains a minority vote and not the majority that have actually taken a decision at the polling unit.